Okay. Yeah. Listen, he's got us pinned. I'm going to try and draw his fire. Can you see that wall there? We try. That one. Yeah. Can you get to it? Yeah, I think so. Why? Get over it. Come round behind him. I'll draw his fire while you grab him and get the gun. While you stay here? Yes. Drawing his fire? Yes. I'll jump over the wall, run round in the dark, find a bloke with a gun, beat him up, grab the gun, and then sing out to you to stop drawing his fire. Yes. I'll count to three. One, two, three. Go, go, go. 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 Ken. Yeah? Go. Right, eh? Where the hell are you going? Oh, what about him? Well, don't invite him. Good idea. the night I went out with Barry O'Connell that did it. Barry took me up to Cooney's Gorge one beautiful moonlit night at the very end of summer for a spot of pig shooting. Just Barry, six pig dogs and myself. Would have been just as romantic without the pig dogs or the rifle or Barry. Going pig shooting with Barry was considered a coup socially. My mother gave me the boots she'd worn 30 years before when she and Dad had gone pig shooting before the magic died. By the Monday, all I wanted to do was get out and be swallowed up in the great swirling mass of human excitement that gives the city its life. And Tasmania, Lake Sea, 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 They've probably never seen a check before. They're a public car park. Yeah, well, they ought to come out of the Stone Age. A check is a perfectly acceptable means of discharging a debt. The doctor will see you now. 260, please. I'd like the receipt for tax purposes. On the other hand, as long as the car's in there, it's not costing us anything to keep it on the road. Oh, I'm pleased about that because it isn't on the road. It's costing us. It's only 60 an hour to keep it on the road. I don't know why you don't take a more charitable view. There isn't one. You're an idiot. You got a dollar 20? Write him a check, right? Hello? Hello? Yes, hold on a moment. Keep it down, will you, Kent? Yes, go ahead. Will you shut up? I'm sorry. Yes. Got it. Thank you. Thank you very much. Oh, haven't we? No, we've been overseas. Yes, I'll get a check off for you right away. Okay. Ciao. Fantastic, isn't it? I don't know why we have an answering service. 
In the last 24 hours, we've received a call from a woman who hung up, two wrong numbers, and a foreign sounding bloke who claims to be watching our every move. Who was he? Your brother. Ring him. You want a cup of hot water with a bag in it? Yes, thanks. Now, we need a secretary. I mean, this is the client agency interface, and we can't even make these little things stand up properly. Image boy, we need an image. We can't afford an answering service. I can't afford to come to work. Our car is being held by a parking company. Virtually everything we own is either repossessed or impounded or in hock to someone for a loan on something else. The Australian government's the only other outfit who works like this, and they have a cash flow. We've got a cash flow. We've got a job this afternoon. Minding someone's wedding present. Yeah, it pays. Good point. We're going for a wedding in a tram to get the money to retrieve from a parking building a car we owe $800 on. I feel dizzy. Good morning. Good morning. morning. Dick Sergeant Blair. Good morning. Good morning. Well, that's got that out the way. Do you want a cup of tea? It's terrible. It is terrible. Hey, I'll have a white one, thanks. I wonder if you can help us with regard to a matter. Certainly. What sort of work is it? We don't have a car at the oh, moment. That's the only No, problem. no, it's not that sort of help. Information's what we're after. Far away. Well, last night between 7 and about 9.30, a shooting incident took place in South City Road. Were you anywhere near there last night? No, we weren't. We were in attendance at the opening of a ceramics exhibition at an art gallery in North Epping. Now, I don't know if you're familiar with what's going on in the world of pottery at the moment. Lots of pastel colours, reds, greens, a lot of flecks in the glazing. Now, as a statement, it doesn't say much to me personally, but then, who am I? Ken thought it was wonderful. Ah, excuse me. Oh, thanks. Hello. What's the problem? Shooting match up an alley off City Road last night. Really? Well, can't help you there, I'm afraid. The young fellow and I were up at Wood End last night, up at the dog trials. My brother and I run a little off-white bitch in the odd condo just for the sake of it. It's a good night up at the dogs. Bit of fresh air. Gets us out of here. You realise you were seen running out of Fetters Lane immediately after the shooting? Really? Running? Both of us? Yeah. Are you all right? Oh, yes, sir. Yes, yes. He'll be off the phone in a minute. You should come up to the dogs one night. It's a great night. Hang on. Excuse me, Sergeant. You couldn't give us a lift to a wedding, could you? Help. When you get to a big city, you're attached. Darwin was quite right. Help. You realise that the mating call of a scope is actually the name of a newspaper. That a large group of people is not a bunch of fat stock buyers. It's a bunch of chubby stock brokers. And that if you want to do something relatively simple, like get somewhere to live, Help. you're in for a very Help. unglamorous afternoon. And between these two people, there can be no limit. You can fight each other with your honesty and you hold each other. Do you want to have another look? I've just had another look. I walked around the table, checked the pegs, reset the alarm, counted the blenders, it's all there. Hmm. Not that these people are going to steal anything. This is a top class wedding. Here, yeah, I better have another look. Thank you. Now listen. In a couple of minutes, the guests will be told they can come through and have a look at the loot. That'll take about half an hour. Then they can all be packed up again and taken back to the other vest. Okay? My pleasure. Thanks again. Thanks very much. Right. <laughs> Michael. I thought it was you. How are you? What the devil are you doing over here? Come and have a throat opener. The lads are all here. Thumper, Chook, Buff. Buff Trelaw. <laughs> Who's Buff Trelaw? A uh, mate of ours from law school. He and Michael finished and I didn't. <laughs> He's not one of the footscray Trelaws, is he? This is Ken. Ken, this is Michael. Michael, Ken. Today, hey. Were you at university, Ken? No, I was a bit pushed for time when I was younger. It's a bit hard to get away when no one else in your family's got a job. <laughs> what are you blokes doing here? You, you with the bride or the groom? We're with the bride's father. Looking after the presents. Really? Hmm. That's bloody decent of you. Well, you know, we were in the area and thought, this is what we do for a living. What, mine presents? No, 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 no. We're research operatives. We do a lot of detective work, a lot of police work, uh, Interpol. Right, we quell a lot of rights. A lot of work with hostages. A bit of divorce work if it's absolutely necessary. Nothing too small, no job too technical. I might be able to put a bit of work your way. Great. We're flat to the boards at the moment, but we could probably take a look at it. What is it? Busy. We're a bit flat to the boards at the moment, but we could probably fit it in once the vitamizers and spa bars have been put to bed. What was their alibi when we reckon they'd broken into the council records office? The toffee little bloke with the monogram sock said he was windsurfing and got lost and spent the night at sea. 
and his mate was helping a bloke he'd never met before get a trailer out of a ditch in Albury. Did they do the breaking? Yeah, nothing sure. We'd never work out why, mind you. Nothing was taken. Probably had the wrong address. Was it them up City Road last night? Of course it was. Getting shot at rather than shooting, I'd say. They do a bit of divorce work up that way. Won't happen again. I think we can close the fire. Where were they? Well, socks and windsurfing reckon they were at the opening of a ceramics exhibition, which didn't impress him much. And his partner told me that they were at the dog trials at Wood End with his brother. Reckons it's not a bad night. Were there any dog trials up at Wood End last night? No, not since 1964. That's a while ago. Well, everything's relative. There hasn't been a ceramics exhibition at the Epping Gallery since it opened in 1927. Or since it closed in 1948. Did he offer you a cup of tea? Hmm? He didn't take it. He didn't drink the tea. That bloke makes the worst tea in the world. I don't know. How much is the rent? I'm sorry, I can hardly hear you. It's what? Oh, it's gone. Oh, right. Yeah, thanks anyway. Okay. Bye. I've got a client who's in a bit of trouble with the taxation department. We've got to provide them with some answers. Uh, my client's name is Mr. Tony Mullins. Ah, Belmore. Yes, the Belmore Underguns. I knew the daughter. Right, very. Well, this is Tony, the old man. He's got three companies. His partner and the one that's causing all the trouble is a chap called Doug Sherwood. Uh, these other two companies are owned by Mullins and his wife. Mullins is 61, he's completely honest. Hasn't had a parking ticket in four and a half years. <laughs> he's the most respectable man I've ever met. He's telling the truth. I think someone set him up. He doesn't know a damn thing about it. So where's this other bloke, his partner in the salt shaker? Where's he? No one can find him. Ah. Mm. Well, what's this company been doing? Well, that's what we want you blokes to find out. The taxation department has queried three payments made into this company. Now, we know this company isn't trading. Someone's been using it to put money through. It uh, looks like a laundering operation. In there dirty, out there clean. <laughs> a payment for an underwear company for Christ's sake, what could be more innocent? <laughs> I don't understand it. So where's the money now? Gone again. How? How much? A quarter of a million. Mm. I don't understand it. How did they do that? Well, oh, that's the hard one, guys. Uh, you'll need accounting back up on this now. I've got some tame ones running around. I don't know. Maybe you've got your own. We don't have anything. Not of the premises, but we have access to plenty well, of... Well, if you need experts, get them. We're looking for answers quickly. Now, if you can't handle it, I'll give it to someone else. But uh, if you want it, the job's yours. I'll give you an advance. I'll cover your expenses and uh, I'll give you a good per who needs a pedia? We've got a perfectly good HR home. Yeah, look, I'll have someone run the uh, details of all this over to you. Talk to Mullins. I'll, I'll ring him. He'll be expecting you. Go get him, Tiger. Uh, it was uh, nice meeting you, Ken. I'll be in touch. Ciao, Michael. Tony Mullins will be expecting us. That's a bit rich, isn't it? We haven't said we'd do it yet. Of course we'll do it. It's the first decent investigative job we've had. Look, this is the sort of work we need. Work for lawyers. Exciting, challenging, highly paid work. Life in the fast lane, Ken. I mean, look at this. A man leaves $20 for a cappuccino. <laughs> the man's opening a door for us. The man is a pompous clown. See that, Jack? $20 note. It's the next one up from a 10. There'll be a lot more of these from now on. Bryce and I are in the fast lane. We don't know the first thing about accounting, and we don't know anyone who does. We've got no track record with this sort of work, and we're completely out of our depth. I didn't know what your old university mate was talking about in there, and I'll bet you didn't either. Which is point four. And point five is the bloke himself. God, if I wanted to work for someone like that, I'd get a job with a half rug in a ski lodge. Jesus, you are negative. You're a snob. You haven't got a decent word to say about any of our other clients. You carry on as if you're in pain having to work with them at all, and then some smart ass lawyer turns up with rounded vows and other people's money, and you lie down and think of England. You're the bloody snob. You bristle whenever anybody who's ever achieved anything comes anywhere near you. You don't achieve your parents. Don't you want us to do this job? How much choice have we got? None. Besides, it'll give us a chance to get the car back. Look, we own money all over town, and if we don't get a secretary soon, we'll lose contact with the outside world.
Tom. Hello there. What's wrong with the bloke downstairs? He was the secretary. He ran some division in the railways for donkey's years, and now he's got nothing to do. He told me he was a chauffeur when we bought the car. Anyway, we're not running a rest home. He sits down there all day, resorting old footy records and whistling bits of the King and I, and he could run our office blindfolded. Have you given something to do? Well, I'll see who replies to the advertisement. Women? That's who replied to the advertisement. I didn't specify. You're not allowed to. They won't take sexist advertising. What do they make you change? Fast-moving, ambitious, great-looking chick. Good God. And what do they suggest? Fast-moving, ambitious, great-looking secretary. And what's wrong with the bloke downstairs? He lacks ambition. You gentlemen wanted to see Mr. Mullins. Yes, he is expecting us. He's not here. here. Oh, uh, do you know where he is? No, I've got no idea. Will he be back? No idea. You know where we can find him? I'm afraid I don't know where he is. But you can just pass him some of these if you find them a bit difficult. Look, would you mind if we look around and see we're conducting an investigation? I'm afraid I must ask you to leave. Do you give away show bags or anything? It'd be a pity not to have something you remember the occasion by. Would you have his home address? Oh, for God's sake, we can't check the phone book. It's not exactly Sherlock Holmes' territory. The guy is expecting it. Good afternoon. That's well. Seem to go pretty well? Yes, we've broken the back of it, I think. Shall we find out where it is? Might as well. If he wasn't expecting us before, he will be now. Hmm. Attractive bijou hideaway combining oldie worldy charm with closeness to skating rink and a bus depot. No, thank you. Now, look, I'm used to these sort of people, so uh, let me do the talking, OK? Of course, Bright. Beer? Yes, yeah, thank you. Right, uh, Hume. Eunice. Hi, oh, Eunice. Uh, this is Bryce. Hello. Oh, how do you do? And Ken. Good day. Hello. These are the lads Michael told us about. Yes. Do sit down. Thank you. Uh, we've uh, met before, haven't we, Bryce? Yes, briefly, years ago. I went out with a friend of Verity's, Libby Whittaker. Mm. What? Libby Whittaker. <laughs> Libby Whittaker. Strong forehand. What happened to Libby? I don't know. I haven't seen her for years. She married a Birchfield, didn't she? One of the Birchfield boys? Oh, yes. I've got a feeling they're in America. What's Verity doing now? Lecturing in the women's affairs at Sydney. Found her niche at last, thank uh, God. Sorry, Ken. This isn't very interesting to you, I suppose. <laughs> well, I've gone over this missing money thing a thousand times and I simply can't understand what's happened. Have you seen Doug Sherwood lately? No, no one has. I haven't seen Doug for a long time. Any idea where he might be? Uh, none at all. Well, his wife died a few years back, and uh, he's retired now, so there's no reason for him to stick around home. Did he ever mention any money troubles? No, nah, Doug wouldn't have any money troubles. Best mixture of caution and adventure I ever saw, Doug. <laughs> Completely sound in business, worked hard, honest, lovely bloke. No, this thing has got nothing to do with that. Well, you don't know anything about it. He's gone missing. No, he hasn't. Well, we don't know where he is. Well, that mightn't be his fault. He did disappear the day the summonses were issued. Yes. No, I can't believe Doug's got anything to do with it. Is there a custodian or something for these buildings? I can't seem to find any of the numbers. Not really, not. Why? Who are you after? Oh, it's the room vacant. Number 17C. I thought I'd have a look at it. 17C. Doesn't seem right. They're all officers around here. They're all officers around here, aren't they? Don't ask me. I think you'll find they're all officers around here. 17C. 17C. What number are we? Don't know. Here, let's have a look, mate. What's the phone number there? Oh, that's the young lad. <laughs> no, that can't be right. Unless they're moving. It's Ken and Bryce. They're in the, uh... They're in the, uh... What business would you say Ken and Bryce are in? Yes, I'll hold. Where are you going? To look for Doug Sherwood. Why? Because he's our only lead. Look, sit down and I'll round him up with a couple of calls. Now, grab the other phone. We haven't got one. Hello? Yes, I wonder if you can help me. 
Now, I need the names of all the international passengers out of Australia in the last six or seven weeks. No, I don't know the exact date. Well, his name is Doug Sherwood, but he was probably travelling under another name. Hang on. Have you got any idea what name Doug Sherwood could be travelling under? No. Sorry, can't help you there, I'm afraid. Hello? You've got more chance of finding Doug Sherwood on the street than you have doing it like that. Yes, but what about the secretaries? The place will be full of applicants this afternoon. Why don't you look for Doug Sherwood tomorrow? Look for the prime suspect tomorrow. Hire a secretary today. If I say it often enough, it might make sense. Hello. Hi. Come in, come in. Hi. I'm Bryce. That was Ken. Hi. Have a seat. I'm Pat. I'm here about the advertisement. Of course. Uh, just the two rooms, is it? Pretty much, yes. What are the sleeping arrangements? Well, we mostly go home to sleep. And what about food? Ken normally buys a few broken biscuits in the sack from some factory. Otherwise, we hardly eat at all, really. <laughs> now, can, uh, can you do shorthand? No. You type? Not really, no. I see. Rent's very cheap. How do you know? Well, that's why I'm here. That's what attracted me. It's the cheapest rent in the paper. Could I, uh, could I just see that for a moment? Good God, they put the bloody thing under rooms to rent. I mean, why would anybody advertise for a fast-moving, ambitious, great-looking secretary under rooms to rent? I wondered that. Bridge when I was a kid. He used to strut about like this man, head bobbing, eyes darting. I thought he was really clever until he walked into a chainsaw. If this man's going to offer me a job, I'll have to be prepared to keep him well clear of machines. Okay, I'll tell you what. We'll make this place habitable for you on a temporary basis till you find somewhere. You can do a bit of light secretarial work as a payment. A bit of phone answering, a bit of cleaning, nothing too major. Ken's a bit of a mongrel, but he's away most of the time, and we'll see how things work out in a couple of weeks. Uh, what does the company do, exactly? Well, in effect, this is an international consultancy. A data pool in the sense that we initiate research. We feed into a lot of bigger strings. Stuff comes in here from all around the world. Ah, excuse me. Hello? Hello? It's the data pool. You haven't got a nail file I can borrow, have you? In all honesty, this mightn't be much of a job, but I am qualified. I do need a place to live, and I have got a nail file. That Bryce. Interesting he should turn up. Could have a no-hoper, I always thought. Hope we're not paying him too much. I didn't take to his friend, I must say. Oh, he's all right. Didn't Bryce do law for a while? Yes, I think he did. And wasn't he in the army for about five minutes? I bet his friend didn't do law. Hmm. Mr. Sherwood? Yes. Mr. Doug Sherwood? That's right. You're a difficult man to find. Hello? Yes, it is. I'm working in a data no, pool. An international data Wouldn't pool. We get calls in here from all over the world. Yeah. Some of them. Right. Very exciting. Okay. Bye. International? No, local call. Who was it? Spiro. He wants Ken to ring him. And who is Spiro? A friend of Ken's. How do you know he's a friend? He said so. And uh, what was it with regard to? Pardon? What was it about? What was it with regard to? 
It was with regard to Ken phoning him back. About what? I don't know. Okay, now look. This is a professional business office. And we should have a professional business manner in our dealings with the public. Now, the telephone is a tool, and it must do several things for us. It must tell us who we're talking to, where they're from, how we can get back to them, and what it is with regard to. Now, I know it's a bit formal, but it's rather important. Cup of tea? Yes, thanks. So, uh, did you get Spiro's number? No, Ken's got his number. And how do you know that? Spiro said. Well, I hope he's right. Well, if he's not, we can always go and ask him. He works in a garage up the road. And how do you know that? He told me. Sugar? There is a certain fellowship which grows up between men who've embarked on some task of mind-numbing simplicity. A deep respect develops which depends on not discussing anything of importance and not running the risk of saying anything. It's the foundation of both of our major political parties and is the key to an understanding of the national character and why it takes two or more men so long to get anything done. Nah. You don't think he did it, then? Nah, Tony, no, nah, not Tony. Wrong fella. Well, what do you think happened? No idea. Not pass with that thing, will you? Well, it must have been somebody. You don't know sort of work before? Investigations, asking questions? Not in the corporate crime area, no. Okay. I reckon Tony's innocent, I've told you that. The next thing you've got to ask yourself is whether or not I did it. Well, yes, yeah, fair enough. So I'll tell you. Yes, please. As it happens, I didn't. The dates of the transactions are all wrong for me. On top of which, somebody must have authorised those payments. And I don't know where those documents are, but I can assure you. They don't have my signature on them. Why did you leave town? When? Last Thursday. Why shouldn't I? Looks a bit suspicious, just disappearing like that. Oh, I didn't disappear. I came down here. You found me, didn't you? What about Tony? He knows I'm here. Didn't yesterday. I rang him this morning. Hello? Yes, he is. Hang on a sec. Who is it for? It's for you. Well, who is it? I don't know. Didn't you ask? No. Will you? Certainly. Hello, he'd like to know who you are, please. Thank you. Denise Pryor. Never heard of her. Ask her what it's with regard to. Hello, Denise. It's me again. Uh, he'd like to know what it's with regard to. Thank you. She's calling for Mr. Michael Collins. She's his secretary. Right, I'll take the call. Hello, Michael. Oh, well, could you put him on, please? Oh, I see. Yes, right, I understand. Well, I'll uh, give you back to my secretary. Hang up the phone, thanks. Bye, Denise. That was Denise. Michael's secretary. He's one of our clients. Now, uh, and Mrs. Mullins will be dropping off some account books. And if anyone rings, get their name and number, and I don't want to talk to anyone without knowing what it's worth regard to. How long did it take you to get down? Oh, about an hour and a half. That's no bad. What's it take you? About the same. Yeah, I thought it was longer. No, about an hour and a half. That's about right. They've uh, trimmed a few corners, I noticed. The road used to go through Sutherland, but... Uh, I don't remember coming through Sutherland today. No, you don't. You bypass Sutherland. Yeah. I used to know a bloke in Sutherland. Ernie Cowens. Ernie Cowens. He used to run the petrol station. That's right. Married a nurse. Yeah, don't tell me. Uh... Uh, big woman. Um, long black hair. Sister in telecom. Um, Nola. Nola Cowens. That's right. Nola Cowens. What happened to her? She died about four years ago. Oh. Ernie's still there. How's he? He's broke. The whole town's broke. The oil company put a big self-service complex up on the freeway. Mm. Uh, do you mind if I ask a few questions about Belmore Merchandising? Oh, bloody Belmore Merchandising. Now, I don't really understand. When was it set up? Oh, 58? 59, was it? Yeah, about then. And what did it do? Well, it didn't really do anything. It was going to retail our stuff. We were going to open a whole lot of shops. <laughs> and what happened? Well, two things happened. Underwear went mad, and we were flat sick at the factory making the stuff. Franchising was the way to go. We didn't have time to run a retail operation. And my business took off? That's right. It just never happened. What did the company do? Didn't do anything, did it? Knowing much, anyway. Well, didn't do any merchandising. Didn't do anything, did it? Oh, I did a few things. 
Would it then? What about? Bought a boat. <laughs> Bought that boat for our kids. Bought a little dinghy for our kids. <laughs> what happened to that dinghy? I don't know. Didn't we give it to the Dawson girl? That's right, I think we did. Say, hey, whatever happened to the Dawson girl? Oh, I don't know. Yeah. Hello? This is the company records office? Correct. Good. Listen, love, I wonder if you could give me a hand. Now, I need a complete rundown on this company, Belmore Holdings, and everything you've got on a guy called Doug Sherwood. Now, I'll go away and have a haircut and come back in about a half an hour, okay? I'm afraid you'll have to take a number and wait. Is there someone else I can talk to? I'm afraid you'll just have to take a number and wait. The machines are all in use. Now, listen, Hart, I don't have time to play games. I'm in the private sector. Could I talk to your superior? I take it there is someone in charge here? Oh, yes, Mr. Inglis. Good. Well, I think I'd be better served if I deal directly with Mr. Inglis, one-to-one. Certainly. Take a number and wait. He'll call you shortly. Hello. 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 Is the brass about? No, he's out on the street. Are you Mrs. Mullins? Yes. I'm supposed to drop these off. Oh, yes, thank you. Accounts book. Yes, that's right. Yeah, he's expecting them. Yes. I said I'd drop them round. Thanks, sir. Uh, you haven't missed him by much, actually. He's only been gone a short while. No, yeah, that's okay. It's really just the accounts. I said I'd drop them round. That's okay. Okay. Fine. Thanks. Uh... Well, I'll tell him that you called, and uh, I'll make sure he gets these. Thanks. Thank you. It's really no trouble. I'll see you again. Hmm. Bye. Bye. It's perfectly ordinary, standard business practice to tell me things. I'm not psychic. I don't know you found Doug Sherwood until you tell me you found Doug Sherwood. I just told you that. You just told me two minutes ago, but you found him this morning. Do you know what I did this afternoon? No idea. I went looking for someone. Do you know who I went looking for? Mm, very nice. Very nice, Jack. Doug Sherwood. Get away. I spent the entire afternoon looking for Doug Sherwood. Did you find him? But why didn't you ring? You don't think, do you? It simply doesn't occur to you that we're trying to run a professional business exercise here. I mean, why didn't you call? I rang up when I was down there. I rang three or four times after Tony arrived, and I rang twice from a gas station on the way back. Who did you talk to? You didn't talk to me. I didn't talk to anyone. They couldn't find anyone to accept the charges. Well, did the operator say what it was with regard to? I'm afraid we can't speak to anybody unless we know what it's with regard to, you know. Uh, Ken, uh, what did you make of Doug Sherwood? Innocent. Didn't do it. Nothing to do with him. Why not? Not the sort of bloke. Could you be more specific? Can I ask you something? What was it concerned with being in reference to? Could I have the day off tomorrow, please? Out of the question, I'm afraid. Now, what was Tony Mullins doing there? He came down to see Doug. Yes, he's being set up, you know. I got it all worked out. Who set him up? Doug Sherwood. No, he didn't. He must have. He didn't. Well, you're saying Tony's guilty. You are, you clot. You're saying the person we've been hired to defend is guilty and the bloke who obviously pulled the rug is a public amenity. I mean, Tony isn't guilty. He's the reason we're involved at all. Well, Doug Sherwood didn't do it. Well, someone must have. What exactly is it they're supposed to have done? (coughs) Oh, incidentally, Ken, this is Pat. Pat, this is Ken. Don't worry. All we're doing is dropping these off and putting signatures on forms for the taxman. Oh, I suppose I kidded myself it wouldn't get this far. Oh, uh, we'll see what Bryce comes up with. Is he here, is he? Yes. He's digging away now. The facts are all laid out. If Bryce can find some little thing somewhere, a, a note, an entry, a payment, anything, it could completely alter the way those facts are regarded. But is he any good? Bryce? He's one of the very best. He's an ornament to the game. I don't know. I've raked through those ledges with a fine tooth comb and I can't find anything. You're a law dropout. We need somebody who dropped out of commerce to tell us about ledges. One of these days you'll say something sensible. Why don't we hire an accountant to go through the books? We can't afford it. Pat? What about her? Well, maybe she knows something about ledges. She's a secretary. Seems pretty sensible to me. It's a very complex problem. You need skill, background, experience. You need an accountant. Look, we are not in a position to hire an accountant. We'll have to do it ourselves. Okay. Okay. 
you'll get it wrong, but okay. Why don't we try a pack? Frankly, she simply doesn't have it. If she's so dumb, why is she sitting looking at the ledges while we are going out to get the sandwiches? Simply a matter of delegation. I mean, anyone can sit and look after a few ledger books. On the other hand, it takes real talent to order a ham and cheese sandwich. These books are really interesting. Really? Have a sandwich. The tax people have said that three payments of $80,000 are missing, right? Pat, I really don't think you should bother yourself with this, honestly. I think I'll tell what's happened to them. Great. These companies, Belmore Holdings and Belmore Undergarments, have registered three payments of $80,000 to Belmore Merchandising. But when you look up Belmore Merchandising's accounts, none of those payments have been entered. Well, it's obviously a clerical oversight. Happens all the time. Mighty big oversight. So how come no one else has noticed this remarkable coincidence? I don't think anyone has seen these accounts. Do we know who did these accounts? Yes. Yeah. Phil Davis, Chief Accountant. Why would Tony Mullins take money out of a company he already owns, put it into another company he owns, and then take it out again? Fair question. To avoid paying tax? Very good ask. I'll call you from Billmore. It'll be with regard to Phil Davis. Doesn't this destroy Mullins' case? I need to know about it. You don't even know what they are. These aren't the company's account books. Well, what are they? Rough ledgers. But you use these books when you're preparing the proper accounts. Of course I do. Well, where did you hide the three cash payments to Belmore Merchandising? 85,000, 81,000 and 84,000. I bet they're not in the official records. I bet the auditor's never heard of them. I bet they travel under another name. I don't have to answer any of this. Tim, you sure you've got your facts right? You sure you're reading the books the right way? The payments are all recorded next to the check numbers. Where did you get these books? Are the taxation office seen them? No, I keep telling you, they're my own working records. What have the tax office got, Phil? They've got the official audited company accounts. Where did you hide the three cash payments? Did you hide them? Is this true? Yes. Where? Why? To cover them up. I couldn't just take a quarter of a million dollars through as a cash payment to a defunct company. But why was the money paid to a defunct company? I don't know. I didn't pay it. I just covered it up. Well, who paid it? Phil, it's very important. Who paid it? You did. I paid it. Of course you did. Why do you think I had to cover it up? Well, that was to me. I didn't pay it. I don't even understand it. Well, I signed so many things, Ken. I spend half my life signing things. I suppose I signed my name 20 or 30 times a day. Invoices, cards farewelling the South, interim reports, luncheon vouchers. I don't know what they are. I just signed the bloody thing. And Phil's covered them up. You haven't done yourselves a big favour here, have you? I'm very sorry. Don't be silly. You blokes have done a very good job. Well, Tony mightn't have done it. Maybe not. It puts our position through the shredder anyway. It would be very difficult to establish he didn't know what was going on. So what will you do? Say so he didn't know what was going on. Did he? I'd say so. I think if there was a verdict of very guilty, I think they'd bring it down against Tony in this case. Of course, it's Eunice, Tony's wife, who's the real victim. She's been married to him for 30 years, and now she finds out he's a crook. 30 wasted years. Heartbreaking. Still, that's the way it is in the big city. It's doggy dog. You get too cynical too fast. I don't know. I think Ken's the lucky one. I mean, I've grown too hard, too cold, too rational. Didn't you think Tony Mullins was innocent? If there was a verdict of very guilty, I think they'd bring it down against Tony in this case, frankly. Well, I don't think Ken agrees with you. Ken never agrees. I'm uh, not here. Hello? He's not here. I'm sorry? Certainly. Okay. Bye. International? No, Ken's brother. 
He wants to borrow a torque wrench. Ah. Here's the certificate of incorporation. The company registered on the desk over here. Oh, thanks. You've got that one upside down. Bye bye. Uh, Belmore Merchandising, June 16, Incorporated, 1959. Directors, shareholders, change of board members. When were they changed? 1977. Registered officers, returns, file assets, and so on. Exactly what I want. Um, how long can I keep this stuff? A couple of days would probably be all right, depending on. Oh, what... I'm afraid we don't lend books. We can provide you with a copy of that information, though. It won't take a moment. Oh, fantastic. Cost you 15 cents a page. Fine. I'll be back in a moment. Okay. You got that thing on upside down? Oh, thanks very much. Where are we going? We're going for a bit of a drive. I want to show you something. And where were you this morning? Company records office. Waste of time. Champion Street. One of the directors of Belmore Merchandising is a Mr. Roberts. Mr. Roberts' address is 44 Champion Street. I thought we might pay him a little social call. Um, you spot 44, Brian? 36, 38, 40, 42. Yeah. There is no 44. Oh, dear me. Um, what's the next name on the list of Belmore board directors? Uh, Gilfillan. Address? 94 Champion Street. Mm Which one do you think is Gilfin? The one on the swing? Don't be stupid. That's probably him in the green dress. He must have moved. Next member, please. Mr. Turbo. Oh? 114 Pimlico Road. You see that block of flats over there? Yes. Built where Pimlico Road used to be. Mr. DeBerry. Yes, Valley Road. Read what it says over Valley Road on the map there. Big red print in the town, Mr. Sign of proposed freeway. I've finished it now. Do you want to go over and have a look? Well, anyone else? I mean, what about the others on this list? Oh, I can actually introduce you to them. Fine. Right, we have a quorum. Bob Tucker. Bryce, I'd like you to meet Bob Tucker. Bryce, this is Bob. Bob, this is Bryce. Alan Stewart, Bryce. Alan and David Teddy over there by the tap, the tall one with the flowers on his chest, were elected onto the board in 1961. And as you can see, Alan hasn't been at all well since 1949. So his property is held by Peter Kavanagh here and Ron Hill. I don't know if you know Ron. No, don't get up, Ron. Ron is the deputy chairman. This little group, if they only knew it, controls Belmore merchandising. Are any of them alive at all? Tony Mullen and Doug Sherwood. Did Tony and Doug know these folks? I doubt it. The law firm formed the company and then revamped the board in 1977. Which law firm? McKenna and Renee. And who are they? I don't know, but when they did it, they had a young solicitor called Michael Collins working for them. What are you suggesting? I'm stating what appears to be a fact. Dear old Michael from the university is a criminal. Possibly a very rich criminal. I don't see why not. The evidence is all there. Got a cuppa? Yes, thanks. Well, because he's a lawyer and I've known him for years. I don't know. I don't suppose you expect your friends to be crooks. It really is very disappointing. How do you think I feel? We were practically brothers. But why hire us and risk being caught? It's dumb. Perhaps he didn't think there was a risk. Oh, he must have. I mean, you wouldn't hire a couple of investigators and hope they wouldn't find out anything. At least I don't think you would. And if you did, you'd have to be pretty sure they weren't going to stumble across something. You'd have to lay false clues. You'd have to keep leading them off the track. I mean, let's face it, they'd have to be fairly thick, wouldn't they? Yeah, but even if we were, how would Michael get the money out of Belmore? Any authority would have to be signed by Tony. Or Doug Sherwood. Or Doug Sherwood. Or Eunice. No, she couldn't sign, could she? Yeah, she can according to the stuff that uh, Ken got from the company records office. Why would she, though? Oh, oh, oh come on. You're not going to tell me that Michael and Eunice have been rogering each other and sending poor Tony the bill. A bloody woman isn't like that. I don't believe it. Michael Collins. He was in the choir. Of course, you must appreciate that we're not absolutely 100% sure about this, but 
The way things stand, it seems that your wife is possibly involved to some extent or another with Michael Collins. You mean sexually? Well, we've received certain information. Yes. I see. We're both deeply sorry. Yes, Eunice and Michael have been having it off for some time. We think they might have taken you for a bit of a ride. You mean financial? Yes, we think they might be behind the Belmore merchandising thing. Well, we don't know. We're not sure. We're probably wrong. Well, I knew this was a possibility. The affair I could understand in a way. Eunice is a younger woman. I'll be 62 in August, so I perhaps wasn't too surprised at that. This, this Belmore thing. I mean, she doesn't need the money. Maybe she's been used, I don't know. If she has, I feel very sorry for her. She's going to be very badly hurt. What are you going to do? Well, I'll face the charges. Eunice mustn't be involved. I'll be okay. But that's crazy. Well, that doesn't really matter anyway. Oh, will you look at those bloody high feet. That's a very honorable thing to do. You bastard. You're a dishonest, crooked, stuck-up bastard. Drink? It's the arrogance that gets me. Mr. Bloody High and Mighty hiring his old second-year law dropout mate to sniff out the wind while a quarter of a million dollars vanishes off the face of the earth. Bryce, there's something on your mind. I feel sure we can come to an understanding here if we settle down a touch, have a drink, and start at the very beginning, all right? Uh, I'm in a meeting. Go ahead. I discovered various things in the course of my investigation for Tony Mullins' tax problems. Two of them have a particularly laxative effect. One, thanks to some nifty work on your part, the Velmore board is full of dead people. And two, you and Eunice Mullins have been having some sort of bloody affair and you've set Tony up. Now, you probably thought you were a great genius, but it won't work. Because the moment Tony talks, you're going to go for a row of cans. Let me firstly assure you that I am not now and have not been at any stage in the past having an affair or liaison of anything other than the most professional character with Eunice Mullins. And I would counsel you against making that or a similar allegation outside of this office. Oh, look, I'm in a meeting! Now, this other story about uh, Belmore having dead directors, forget it. It has nothing to do with anything. I suggest we forget this conversation ever took place. And I suggest that you take a look at the signature on that, bearing in mind that all those people you say attended that meeting and are dead. Look, you don't know what you're talking about, Bryce. You're out of your depth, boy. Oh, uh, I've left our fee with your receptionist. You're not in a meeting anymore. <laughs> What difference does it make if people know about it? Please, understand. I thought about this and there is simply no other way. I'm leaving, that's it. Well, why not stay for a while at least? I can't. I've been set up. Who by? I don't know. But I do know I can't stay. You'll see why after I've gone. Where will you go? I don't know. Will you be coming back? I'm sorry. You had to be the one who was hurt by all this. I really am. It's not easy to admit that someone who's meant a lot to you has let you down. Someone who's been a friend for a long time. Or even someone who's looked down his nose at you and treated you like an idiot for nearly 20 years. The difference is not always obvious. It's appalling. Absolutely appalling. He was a crook, Bryce. He was prepared to let Tony and Doug take all the blame. Yeah, I know, I know. Probably isn't the best time to bring this up, but I think you should know I found myself a job. Oh, and we appreciate it. Now, you probably haven't had the credit you deserve, but Ken and I, in our own quiet way, are very grateful. Hmm. No, I mean, I found myself another job. I'm going to work for Shell. In a petrol station? No, head office. Big risk. Risk? Why? Oil company. Don't you follow the stock market? No. What's the matter? Have you any idea of what's happening in the Middle East? Oh, oh, mm. oh. <laughs> Don't you want me to go? Your decision. It's up to you. Oh, I thought this job was temporary. Do you want me to stay on? No, 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 no. We just thought perhaps you prefer to stick with something solid, reliable. Interesting. Varied. Guaranteed future. What guaranteed future? Well, she knows that if we fold up, she can always get a job with Shell. And so, the Belmore case was closed. Everybody was happy. Especially Doug and Tony. But 
city about, Michael. Nice enough, bloke. You're not going to start feeling sorry for him, are you? Nah. We had depended on someone. He'd been close to the company for a long time. He was the obvious choice. Greedy bugger. Well, old lawyers are greedy. <laughs> we had a bit of luck with the young, this thing. Oh, that's a godsend. Couldn't have planned it better. Did you know his father? Ted Collins? No. Good fella. Very smart. Would have seen us coming, I think, the old man. What? Wouldn't have fallen for us? Nah. Been involved in enough frame-ups himself to know all the signs. Did he? Yeah. Well, he was deputy premier for a while. Yeah. How's you, man? Oh, a bit down in the dumps. I sent it to the hairdresser. We're not going to get that rain. Uh, never thought we would. A bit far south. Want a beer? No, I'm happy. Does you have any? No. I'm right. <laughs> 